line here. What a punt from Anthony Barella. He ties the lead all square with Eagle McMahon through 13 holes. Likely be a drop in for par, and he can close out his first ever major. Oh my goodness, Final, what just happened on 16? Hello and welcome back fellow disc golf enthusiasts to coverage of the 2023 Finnish National Disc Golf Championships. This country has incredible talent and we are at an exciting course. Happy to bring you Round 3 Front 9 MPO lead card coverage in Mukula Disc Golf Park. We have reached the halfway of the tournament with two of four rounds complete. We now are extending to the back end of this exciting competition. I'm Connor Wood and with me... Elias Lukanen. What is up, Connor? What is up, viewers? Let's have a look at who we got on the card. Obviously, no surprises here. Niklas Antila, the reigning and two-time Finnish champion. Also, the reigning European champion. He's got a few-stroke lead over the other competitors here. Chasing him as close as anyone, Teemu Lampainen has a great track record here at the Finnish Nationals and has shown to have a very good command of both the forehand, backhand and putt. So well equipped to try and push our leader here. And next up, Christian Kuaksa. He was in the military earlier this year and having a pretty decent season. Despite that, he's known for having a lot of distance and a lot of effortless distance. You touched on effortless distance, we see here rounding out our lead card, Rasmus Salkoripi. He has an incredible power in both the backhand and forehand, and we'll see how well he translates that onto this course. Not requiring the most distance, although there's certainly a few holes where it is an advantage. A very skilled lead card for you here today. And talking about skill, that's all you need on hole one, not a lot of distance. It's only 84 meters, playing as an island hole. So everybody on the card need to be safe. And if they're not safe, they need to proceed to the drop zone that is about 12 meters away. The OB is wrapping around inside the circle on both the short and the left, and slightly the long side of the basket. The shot itself is quite simple. You're throwing an overstable approach disc or a mid-range hyzer. Hopefully land your way inside the circle and have a tricky putt at this elevated baskets. We see some much nicer weather for scoring today. And all of these players well prepared. A smile on Nicholas's face as he moves to the tee to get us started. And Niklas has been playing incredibly consistent so far, starting with an 8 under round and even bettering that with a 9 under round yesterday, has that 6 stroke lead over the field and is looking to start off with a Discmania Neo Mutant. Just a great shot, very safe the whole way, really using an appropriate width to not bring any danger into play while ensuring he's still pretty close exactly how you want to do it. We've seen Temu been throwing this justice in both rounds one and two. Both times he was really pushing the trees on the left and while he did find himself in bounds, took on a lot more risk than a slightly wider line. We'll look to see him try and make that adjustment here today. Yeah, Temu possibly trying to park the hole, but this time, as he said, much wider maybe even a little bit more wide than he would like. And he's gonna have an outside the circle putt on hole one. It's not exactly the hole you want to have an outside the circle putt on, since almost every time you're putting from outside the circle, you're putting straight towards OB, and there's only about five meters of space behind the basket. Christian going with a much lower line 
Although a nice pushing flight, he gets around the corner. You can see though that with less height, he's pushed a bit long of the basket, whereas getting that nose angle will get the disc to stall out a little bit more. But a fine shot regardless, putting himself inside the circle. And Rasmus now. Rasmus, I believe going with an Innova Toro. Nice overstable approach disc. And he's got that wide, a little bit long, pushing that OB long. And he has a scary pot of his own there. Nobody really parked on this hole, which is not to be expected. It's a really hard hole to park. But I think these first pots are going to show a lot about how confident these players are feeling today. On this moving day, very important to set yourself up for the final round today. We have Teemu up first, longest of the four putts, and you can see a little bit hesitant. Looks to have sat though inbounds. As we move here to Rasmus, fired a little bit long now, coming back at the basket and an incredibly confident stroke. That is, as you said, Elias, a signal for how his round could be going and where his head's at right now. A commanding putt to get us started. We get another look at it. Yeah, Rasmus was a player that was driving the disc extremely well in the first two rounds. Not really shining on the green though, especially in the first round. He had a lot of putting misses and uh, he knows that that's what he needs here to make those putts. And Christian, not quite able to do the same. That's a tough putt. But Niklas is able to translate that shortest of the four putts. He secures his birdie just to make a statement and let this lead card know he's not slowing down anytime soon. And if you want to catch him, you're going to have to turn on the gas. We'll see for Temu and Christian now, their comeback par putts. Both of them quite close. And we see now Rasmus and Christian will be tied at 10 under, just one stroke behind Temu. And all of them, quite a few behind Niklas, so... It's very tight in that second to fourth place position right now. Yeah, and uh, noticeable about Niklas's lead, the both times he has won the Finnish Nationals, he has won it by a very slim margin. Actually, the first time was in a playoff. So he's probably not used to playing with a big lead in the Finnish Nationals. Moving on to hole two, pretty scorable par four here. First shot you need to lay up before this big OB area. First shot is just a pitch up and after that the separation is made with the approach to this pretty well protected green. The drone is flying on the forehand hyzer line but most players are actually approaching with a backhand hyzer. It has possibly the widest opening to the green. Important here on the drive just stay safe doesn't really matter where you are on the fairway. And on the second shot, stick your landing, don't skip too far, because there's long OB inside the circle. And you want to push that OB line as close as possible to reduce distance to the green, but not so close that you are allowing any risk into the shot. We saw that from Niklas there. 5 to 10 behind the line, nice and safe. Rasmus as well, playing the forehand hyzer and in a similar spot. Is there yep, any talk, yep. Elias, on the course of people trying to get to the basket in one? Well, I think this hole is definitely reachable. If there's a good tailwind, I could see somebody going for it, but the layup is just so easy. And the birdie, you're almost always putting for a birdie if you just take the layup. So I feel like that's the reason why we don't see anybody going for this green on one as both Demu and Christian have also made their way to the fairway. That's four normal, normal drives to be expected from the lead card. And the approach is where the difference is obviously made. Niklas up here first, going for the hyzer. And we've really noticed here attacking the green on hole two. Perfect execution by Niklas Antila. The width is often the determining factor for whether or not they can really get into that bullseye or comfortable putt range. And Nicholas going first has shown them all exactly how wide they need to go. We see a lot more height here from Temu, 
And this is going to be fading significantly early to the left. But a very fortunate roll off that tree will kick him back towards the basket. And he is most certainly putting for his birdie. As you said, Elias, oftentimes the pitch up in the hyzer will get you into some look at birdie. Rasmus now. Very wide here. This is a nice looking line here. Avoiding all the trees and what a nice shot from Rasmus. That is kind of to be expected from the lead card. All of these first five holes are the holes that you really want to score on. If you can be two, three, four, even five under through the first five, you're feeling pretty good because the course gets significantly harder after the first holes. And looks like Christian is gonna pick up the birdie here as well. And we're gonna have a chance to get our first star frame with a couple of good putts. Temu will be up first. Considerably longer than the rest left on his putt. And he hits the tree right in front of him. Unfortunate. You saw him go to that straddle to open it up. Potentially could have gone a touch wider to really clean up the space, but we see a great birdie putt from Christian there, firing long on his approach. And both Niklas and Rasmus so close to the pin that it is actually back to Temu now. Yeah, Temu from very short distance, but he did actually miss a putt from similar distance in round two. So looking to clean that up, and he does that nicely. Very confident stroke. And uh, looks like everybody else on the card is gonna card that birdie on this hole. How was the scoring average on this one, Connor? Hole two had 46% of the field find the birdie, averaging 3.61, well under the par four. So absolutely a hole that you want if you want to keep pace. Nice. And uh, another one of those here on hole three requires a bit of a longer shot this time. A longer and uh, more angle control. You're throwing most likely a mid-range or a slightly understable fairway driver, trying to hit it straight with just a slight right finish. Important to turn just before those pine branches on the left side. If you're able to do that, you're most likely in the circle or at least near the circle. But I believe maybe a couple of our players are even going forehand on this one, which is the less conventional play, but could also work pretty well. Niklas, so far, two birdies through the first two holes. This one has a lot of height and speed. He flies past the basket outside the circle. In one of these open fields, may have a windy putt to contend with, although the weather looks good. It will give him a chance from circle two to continue his birdie streak. Here's that forehand you mentioned from Rasmus. Has a really incredible skill with that forehand, shaping both the angles and the distance. You see that on full display there from Rasmus Salkaripi. Great shot into the circle. That's a, such an impressive forehand. I feel like all the forehands usually fade to the right side. It's really difficult to keep it far enough to the left. This is more of a common result with the forehand fading too early and a little bit short there by Christian, who also has a lot of distance on both the backhand and the forehand side. It's going to be a quite, a, quite an interesting comparison to have the different distances on the card with both Christian and Rasmus being some of the longest throwers in Finland. And Teemu here, not quite getting the turn, but still within putting distance. Gonna be a scary putt though to that elevated basket. We see Christian's lie here. Speaking of the comparison of the two players and their two lines respectively, we saw Rasmus play quite a flex line, whereas Christian had more of a hyzer flip up to flat and then fade. Niklas from outside the circle off the band gonna leave him with still some distance left Temu up first and a great putt really to calm those nerves from the putting on hole two very smooth delivery there for him getting his first birdie here in round three and we go back to Nicholas now for his par 
Yeah, still pretty sizable putt left, but he makes good work of that. I feel like Niklas's putting stroke suits some of the wind that we've had here very well. And pretty much everybody on the card, once again, as we had in round two, everybody with that spinny, nice and relatively flat delivery. Everybody besides Temu is putting with quite a flat angle, maybe just the slightest bit of hyzer. As we saw Rasmus there putting three birdies in a row. Best start of the group. Yeah, absolutely flawless so far. And that'll push him up the leaderboards. Came in, tied for fourth, has already snuck his way up. We move to hole four. And hole four. Still continuing this very scorable stretch on the course. This time even less than 100 meters. The only danger on this one is the OB left. It's quite easy, especially with the backhand. If you're fading too early, you're most likely finding that OB left. So to combat that, most players are trying to aim towards the right side of the basket. Maybe get a little bit of a fail, a little bit of a skip to get inside the circle. Today there was actually a different wind on this one. The wind was pushing, it was either a straight headwind or even a right to left wind. Compared to the other days where we had a left to right headwind. So the discs are going to be moving even further left if they're exposed. Rasmus going with more width than we've seen traditionally to account for said wind. And it is a beautiful throw as he is most certainly going four down through four. An incredible line and always great when the first player on the tee is able to execute so cleanly. It almost puts the pressure on the others saying, look, here it is. It's your turn now. And Temu here. I believe that might be a mental issue with the right to left wind. He's putting it way to the right, even with a straight disc, possibly expecting some left finish. Compared to here, for example, Niklas is going with a more overstable, I believe going with an overstable fairway driver, very low, and uh, expecting a little bit of a skip at the end, which he gets. That's a beautiful touch. Nice to see the different lines. We saw Rasmus going with a higher hyzer line, and Niklas there with a very low, with a faster disc. Absolutely. We see a soft Anheuser release from Christian. Surely an extremely overstable disc, but as a result, finding the OB left side an interesting choice into this wind, even with a soft Anheuser, came out really early to the left side. Super overstable flight, and he will be left with a par save putt. This is Temu up first with a long bid and quite a nice line there, even battling that high ceiling as much as possible. This is Christian, his opportunity to save the par. And it's very solid. Yep, nice putt there. And uh, his stroke is looking pretty nice from inside the circle. We saw that outside the circle miss on hole one. But the two shorter putts that he's made have been right in the middle. And Temu there also cleaning up par. It's definitely another hole that uh, the par kind of stings on. You don't feel really good about getting a par, especially with the two players of Rasmus and Niklas getting the birdies here. And Rasmus actually pushing himself to the second position in the tournament. Another short one and a relatively easy one here. Hole 5 is only 75 meters. It's a true tunnel shot with these two mandos keeping players from going around the outside. So you have to go straight. Most players, whether it's a forehand or backhand, are going with a straight disc. Possibly something slightly overstable or at least stable to combat the wind that there commonly is on this one. 
there's really nothing difficult about the shot it's itself but the difficult part is just hitting the gap and keeping the disc under the low ceiling even in this slight wind that we have on this one yeah managing distance as well we touched on the fact that both Christian and Rasmus have some of the biggest distance in the entire country, if not the world, between the forehand and backhand. And it's always interesting to see how well these superpower players can modulate the finesse and speed, arm speed that comes out. Niklas here getting his soft flex out there and just a beautiful display of height and angle control, piercing the tunnel nicely and even finding the late fade to swing back towards the basket. He is right up there with a short putt. We'll see Temu now. Very similar looking line from Temu and what a beautiful shot. Both Niklas and Temu going with something straight to slightly stable at the end. Targeting that right side of the gap, not really turning it over at all. And Christian with a very similar shot as well. Wow. Three almost identical shots there and Rasmus is looking like he's gonna lose a stroke to the entire card just if he gets up and down from here. Great upshot and extremely difficult to maintain perfection throughout a disc golf round. Had, had a flawless performance in the first four and just a slight error there but an immediate correction leaving him parked so a stress-free three. All good we see Christian Kuoksa securing his birdie second of the round moving to 12 under will be getting one stroke back on Rasmus along with Temu here if he can make this putt an unfortunate out the right side from a fairly short distance it's once again him throughout this weekend he has been throwing the disc really well from tee to green but unfortunately those circle one putts have been tricky for him sometimes even looking more comfortable at like eight to ten meters than then five to seven. And Niklas here with a good birdie. And uh, it's pretty tough to see Tim with those putting misses as he's normally a very confident putter. It looks like his misses are quite consistent. He's kind of late releasing the disc towards the right side of the basket, even airballing it to the right. So it might be an issue that is fixable since it's so consistent. We're moving on to another very birdieable hole, although this time having a lot of bogey potential as well. Par 5, 289 meters. On the first shot you're trying to throw an overstable hyzer, just stay on the fairway. And uh, kind of a similar thing on the next one. Also just stay on the fairway, push that right side tree line as much as possible to have the straightest possible look at this basket and the green offering a lot of difficulty with the slope on the long right and short side of the basket and OB pretty much all around. We have seen a lot of big numbers on this hole and um, hopefully not seeing a lot of those on this card. Absolutely. This hole has been the most significant bogey maker on the course in previous rounds. If you can keep it tight and in the fairway, you will be doing well. This is the first hole of the layout up until this point that averages over par. Although today the players performed at quite a significantly better pace than the first two rounds, averaging only 5.04. Still playing over par, but just barely. Players making the adjustments and with some better scoring conditions and weather should play slightly easier. We see two great hyzer drives from Niklas and Christian. And also today there was a nice wind for this hole. There was a bit of a right to left wind that is pushing these hyzers to fly even further. So you can see everybody playing it pretty wide and still getting a lot of left movement. Rasmus there as well with a super safe hyzer but with his distance he's almost near the corner. Temu was also getting very aggressive on this hole in previous rounds. This one looking like a pretty good placement shot, but he was really pushing the distance more than others. Uh, and you don't necessarily need to here on hole six, but it does help with reducing the distance of that final upshot over OB 
to ensure you don't make the mistake of coming up a bit short. You see Niklas here to push this back tree line and get as much distance possible out of this fighting hyzer angle. And another great shot, center cut. Very well done there, and he's going to have just an overstable approach or even a putter approach from there. As we see Temu here with almost a bit of a flip up. And he has got a lot of distance once again, even with that shorter drive, able to push it pretty far down there. That's two ideal positions there. And uh, let's see if Christian or Rasmus are getting more aggressive, because from here the green is actually reachable. An interesting throw there from Christian could have potentially been trying to play into the traditional left side fairway or rather untraditional given that the majority of the players do take the shortcut over OB. This is what you mentioned Elias. Oh rather not just a good placement shot a bit deceptive on the speed out of the hand there but uh, a very nice shot that should leave him short remaining distance to the green. Christian finding the OB left side an important shot here to put it in bounds. It and looks he like has he's not, not done it. Wow, pretty big, two pretty big mistakes in a row from Christian. It's not the widest landing zone at the basket, but it's a lot of thick grass that usually stops your disc. For example, this one from Niklas fading out, but getting nearly no skip. And he has a putt from inside the circle. And Temu as well. Gonna have a, just a short pitch hyzer to the green. Pretty well done at that. Hopefully his putting struggles are not continuing on this one because it's a scary putt from there going right towards OB. Yeah, Niklas as well putting towards that downslope may potentially be in the mind, although we're known to be extremely consistent on the green. We see Christian up first. A very important moment here. Having accumulated two penalty strokes makes that putt under fairly good amount of pressure. That was a great moment for him just to reduce damage and save the bogey. And Niklas here to, in a way, solidify his great start. And he has done it going five under through the first six. That is the recipe for a great round. If you want to play some of the hotter rounds here, you need to start off hot. Demo here. Getting the birdie in the basket with a two under start. Not an incredible start, but still, he has some potential to score on the more difficult holes on the course. We see Rasmus secure his birdie as well. We see a similarly strong start from him. Both Niklas and Rasmus only missing one hole so far. A great performance by these young men as they continue to battle down the stretch. And moving to hole 7. Another pretty birdieable hole. Although this one is quite polarizing. Often do we see either a birdie or a bogey on this hole. Because there is these two OB bunkers Right before the basket, they are so easy to find if you're a little bit late or a little bit early with your big hyzer. Most players going for a big hyzer. Some players going for a bit of a straighter shot. For example, Niklas has gone for this flip-up hyzer almost down the middle. And once again, he has hit the narrowing right in the middle. Just so impressive to be able to do that every single round. And we see he comes up just as shy, a little bit short, but no problems there for him. He is in the circle, and it really is just a situation here where you want to avoid those bunkers. Because even if you're short of them, Rasmus skipping over them. And absolutely parked in the bullseye. Amazing spot to connect with on the ground play just before the hazard and jump it. Super smooth. And Temu here, trying to go for a very similar line to Rasmus. It's a little bit more left though, just getting around the last bunker on the left. And he's gonna have a putt from the edge of the circle. 
that's going to be another good test to see where his putting confidence is at after a couple of misses. And Christian here with what looks like a really bad early release. This is challenging the left side bunker and even challenging the left side OB. But he has got a very fortunate break and has stayed safe. Wow, what happened there? I don't know. Yeah, you'll notice that Christian often has some tape on his fingers to reduce the callousing and, and blisters and just the wear and tear on the skin of throwing a lot of discs and potentially getting a, a bit of a slip or grab onto that. But something he practices with as well, you'll see at the majority of his tournaments, he does have some sort of skin management on his throwing hand. So while it's interesting to note, has not given him problems in the past, although he really did look at his hand as if it had betrayed him off the tee, and you saw his chance there for birdie coming up just a little bit low. We will see Niklas now at a very manageable distance to go six down through seven. And Niklas even going for the pitch putt from towards the back edge of the circle. Perfectly done there, dropping the disc in the basket and uh, continuing his great start. Niklas not really making it easy for the other guys as he already has a nine stroke lead just for a moment before Rasmus taps it in for just the eight stroke lead. And Temu here from the back edge of the circle, about eight meters. And another putt that does not go his way. As he checks to look how much he has left, will likely be him up again. And it's a very important moment. Not only, of course, is he losing the stroke, but it can be incredibly mentally fatiguing to miss many putts throughout the tournament, especially when you have to go putt again immediately in the order of play. It is quite a thing that you need to manage emotionally, mentally. And it's good to see him take a moment there even on this shorter putt, and ensure to put that in. Speaking to Nicholas's performance here, it's incredibly impressive to break away at this level of play with so many talented players. To get such a lead early on really speaks to his skill set. And the only hole he missed, hole three, he, he had a putt from about 11 or 12 that he bounced off the band with. So in terms of throwing, has been nearly perfect. And perfect is what you need on this hole 8. And not only perfect, but a lot of power. It's going to be a great distance comparison between the players, as this hole is playing 129 meters and 11 meters uphill. Most of that uphill coming into play in the last 30 or 20 meters of this hole. A very small percentage of the players in the field even have the power to get inside the circle on this one. So most players playing for that circle two look and hopefully trying to make a long putt. I know Niklas was going for a big flex shot around the left gap on this one. You can either choose the left, the straighter gap, or the right gap for a bigger hyzer. But Niklas going for the left gap here once again. And he had been fairly reliably able to get into circle two and it looks like he's done just that again Something you see from him is incredible consistency. His lines from day to day and rounds are almost identical. A great degree of control. Rasmus, a player that has enough power to push the enormous hyzer down the right side, does not need to rely as much on the understable flip-up game. But he crashes the right side trees and is unable to find the fade. I think he is just outside circle two. Potentially still a jump putt, but nowhere near a expected putting range yeah and that's a pretty big miss from Rasmus this is one of the holes that he I'm sure he wants to pick up the stroke on he was actually inside the bullseye on this hole in round one so showing off how much distance he has kind of giving an opportunity to other players on the card to almost a pick a stroke on him on a stroke on a hole that suits him Maybe the best out of all holes on this course, as we see Temu with a powerful flat shot. 
not quite getting the fade back and he's gonna also be on the back edge of circle two. And I think that's the line you'll see a lot of players go for who don't have that super world-class elite level power. They'll need to use that under stability and get the nose angle down to push the distance a bit more, but going so severely uphill, you also need the height. Christian, with a ton of power, is playing to this right side and looking to find the late fade. He's pushed it to about circle's edge on the hill. Closest drive of the bunch, he will have, I think, about 12 or so meters for his birdie putt. And he just has really clean and smooth power out of his form and delivery. Looks quite effortless for him to generate that power. Yeah, and uh, Christian's still not going quite for the full power shot. I believe since he was in the military and didn't get a lot of practice while he was there, he didn't have a lot of driver shots throughout the winter. So still kind of laying back on, on some of these longer holes, still able to get within putting distance. We saw Rasmus laying up and Temu here to make a highlight putt. And what a great run that was. He's gonna settle on the edge of the bullseye there. Should be no problem for the par. That is a very common score on this one. How many percentage of the field got a par on this one, Connor? Today in round three, it was 86% of the field. Significantly higher par percentage than on any other hole of the round. But also a hole that did not produce many bogeys. As you can see, the green is quite friendly. Players are often getting to somewhere in circle two with quite generous gaps between these trees and the back slope. You really can attack on your upshot or putt. We see Christian with a chance to get the elusive birdie and he connects. Christian Kuoksa finds himself in the 11% of the field able to secure the birdie two here on hole eight. Let's take another look. Christian known for his throwing, but this season has had some incredible putting performances. And you see here the work that he has put in, brings it down to the leg and fires it flat. Very straight and very compact putting form generates a lot of spin. And demo here, just a short putt for the par. Christian gonna pick up a stroke on the entire card here. It's a nice hole to do it on. And um, he's trying to fight his way up the leaderboard here. It's obvious that Niklas has got a big lead over the field already after two and a half rounds. But what this course can produce is a lot of big numbers, especially once we're approaching some of the more difficult holes on the back nine. Front nine is the more scorable nine for sure. And once we get into the woods, and especially to the open holes of the back nine, we're gonna have a lot of scoring separation. Or at least the averages on the holes would say that. But now still moving on to a hole that is very commonly parred. Hole nine, 112 meters. It's a very tricky angle to get inside the circle on. Really the only clean shot that can get to the basket is a very high turnover with either an understable mid-range or an understable putter even. You want your disc to be gliding high through the gap, turning your way over to the right and even gliding a little bit backwards at the end of the flight. You don't really have any opportunity to fade out to the left. And also this forehand can work, but usually inside of circle two at best. But you see he pushes that back tree line a little bit too much needing a perfect hyzer fade timing on that forehand line. He finds it just a little bit late, especially with a faster disc to use the over stability and speed to get there. Very easy to push too straight before you begin that rightwards movement. We see Nicholas going high and wide, a good adjustment to his throw in round two, but unfortunately not hitting the gap cleanly. And he'll be left with a lot of distance left to the basket with some trees in his way. Will not be the easiest of par saves. By any means, we see Rasmus, another incredible forehand thrower, looking to shape the forehand hyzer here. Tons of height on this one. A lot of power. You can see he's really coming from low, keeping all of his mass very close to the ground, getting a lot of power from the legs. That was just a little bit more inside than he would like. You can just see how precise this line is. 
Demo's actually thrown some good shots on this one. Let's see if he can do it again. But this is also a bit too inside. A tough hole and uh, everybody's kind of needing to scramble here. Another hole with over 80% of the field taking their par and even less birdies than hole 8. Rasmus with a great upshot there, shaping the tunnel perfectly. Is left with a tap in for his par. These guys will need to try and throw it in if they want to take a stroke off anyone, but I think all these players content with the three after their tee shots. Christian sliding right up to Rasmus's approach. And what a big break Taking for in the sun. Christian, getting that tree kick and still being parked. Pretty lucky there. That was an instant one-stroke swing. And Niklas is no stranger to making some of these 30-meter putts. Let's see if he gives it a run. Almost a bit of a half bid there. Gonna settle to five meters just for the par. And Temu now with a chance has only found two birdies here on the front nine. Of course, an incredibly long look and very difficult. He shapes the high Anheuser and settles right on top of Rasmus's Toro, I believe. Elias, if two discs are stacked on top of each other, can you play the same mini? I believe if they're completely perfectly lined, then you can obviously play the same mini. I don't know. You know the saying, making minis might uh, <laughs> come pretty clutch in here. <laughs> but probably Solid it doesn't come from that. I don't know, actually. That's a great Yeah, question. I mean, they have the same lie, right? Are you allowed to use a, a competitor's mini if it marks the exact same position? Ah, side by side there. As we're left with some tap-ins to close out our front nine, we see Niklas Antila retaining his incredible eight-stroke lead over Rasmus in second place currently at 15 under, who is two strokes ahead of Temu, who is one stroke ahead of Christian. The front nine really creating more separation than we may have expected as we take a look at the top 10 from Niklas, an incredible six under matched by Rasmus, both of them bogey free along with Temu, who finds himself in third place at two under for the front nine, 13 under total, and Christian tied with Lauri and Puru in fourth place. A great battle. Yeah, thank you guys for watching this front nine. And uh, we're moving to the more difficult, more challenging, more scoring separation, including back nine. If you want to support MDG Media, you can do that on Patreon. They have an own Patreon account. You can get your name on that list at the end of these videos. Also, just liking or subscribing is a huge help. Thank you guys for watching from me and Connor and see you guys on the back nine.